mental health chats and I am more than excited today because I've got somebody here with me that I have known since I was in primary school in Australia and we are really good family friends so this is the lovely Paul Oric. Hello Paul, how are you? Hello Claire, it's great to be reacquainted with you after all these years yes. It's uh, and to think we've come all the way from suburban Sydney <laughs> to the, the delights and the big the big smoke of uh, of the United Kingdom. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. And when I heard you were over here, I thought I've got to get in touch with Paul because Paul always made us all laugh so much when we were kids. So well, I'll try absolutely. and keep it serious today. <laughs> try to be serious. So, Paul, well, speaking of the serious topic, Paul's talking about a very, very important topic, which is all about setting boundaries and expectations because it's so key as a leader because if we don't, we won't retain the staff. So we won't talk about our suburban life when we were kids. Let's talk about what your experience is and what do you do, Paul? Sure. So um, I've been very fortunate uh, since the mid-90s to be involved in mobile communications, and that yeah. has been a fairly constant uh, thread throughout my career. And here in the UK, I um, have my own practice, which is called Taipan Solutions, yeah. And we're focused on delivering uh, IT projects, uh, primarily delivering Wi-Fi uh, design and Wi-Fi implementation. Wow. So interesting. So, so interesting. So setting clear expectations and boundaries are key, are absolutely key. So what do they look like for leaders to set them so that teams work more efficiently? Well, I think... Um, I think you have to peel back the layer of that onion a little bit in a sense of what's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of the policy or what's the purpose of um, the KPI? What's the purpose of um, that boundary that is being set? Because quite often uh, people will walk into an, uh, walk into an organization and it's just been done like that always. Yeah. So understanding the purpose and the outcomes mm -hmm. that are needed for that policy and all that boundary being put in place is really, really important. And I think it's also important that when you're explaining that, you're open to people challenging the orthodoxy of that policy yeah. or that requirement because you're you, the, per, the person coming in to the team, mm -hmm. you're obviously bringing them in for mm -hmm. a reason and yeah. they've got talents and skills. Yeah. So it's probably important to listen to the asset that you're bringing mm -hmm. into the business or that is involved in the business to make sure that they're part of setting the boundary and the expectation as well. Paul, you've said some really important things there and I love them. One, the person you are bringing in is an asset. Yep. They're actually your most expensive asset. That's right. Which is absolutely key. And two, what I was really struck by was that they should be setting the boundaries with you. And this is something that whenever I'm working with leaders, I talk about setting expectations, but not just you setting expectations for your team, but them also setting expectations and boundaries for you. That's and right. Yeah. I often see the light bulbs go on there. So that is key because if you're bringing these people in, you want to retain them. Because as we know, the REC has actually stated a recent amount that it costs at least two and a half times someone's salary to replace them. Yep. And it's expensive. It's so expensive to replace them. It's, it's not only expensive monetarily wise. It's yeah. expensive from operational expertise. Yeah. It's expensive from a customer experience as well. If you have Definitely. a key contributor leaving the business and people don't necessarily leave businesses yeah. from a resignation perspective as they leave mm -hmm. managers. Yeah. And if the manager isn't immersed in creating the boundaries with the person, mm -hmm. then quite often that person, or we'll, we'll call them the employee, yeah. will probably feel a little bit left out in the wind, so to yeah. speak, not involved in the decision-making process and not necessarily in control that's very yes. important as well. Not in control of what they're bringing to the business and mm -hmm. what they're bringing to their job. So yeah. a lot of that comes down to satisfaction, but it's a two-way street. Yeah. And those boundaries 
that we're talking about with the employee, if you're a manager or a senior leadership person, you've also got boundaries on the upline as well. Yeah. And it's important to make sure that you're paying as much attention to the boundaries on your downline as well. Definitely, definitely. So that's so, so important what you've said. And is there anything else of what leaders can do to make sure they're really, really setting those boundaries and expectations so that people don't leave? We don't want people to leave. How can they do it? I think regular engagement. And obviously we have regular engagement with our employees and our people on a regular basis. But regular engagement one-on-one as to what's important to the individual. And that could just mean an informal chat. It could mean a coffee, a lunch. It could mean a walk in the park. It could mean a million different things. But what's important is that regular engagement because regular engagement provides feedback, but it also provides uh, relevance to the person's role. Yeah, yeah. And as I mentioned before, if you're just letting them sit in the wind, then yeah. that is a breeding hotspot of dissatisfaction and yeah. probably um, where people feel as though they're not valued. And we yeah. all talk about how valuable our people are. And we mentioned mm-hmm. it before that when I mentioned the word asset, you know, it's our mm-hmm. most valuable asset. It, they are actually our most important asset. Mm-hmm. And when you mentioned two and a half times salary yeah. to basically bring somebody in, mm-hmm. I think sometimes that asset is mm-hmm. little thought of. Yeah, it is. And what you've just been saying, those methods, they actually go with the coaching that I do on positive intelligence because what I found is so powerful about positive intelligence coaching that I do with leaders and teams is that it really opens up communication so that people can feel a lot calmer, feel more at ease in setting boundaries because Sometimes I find people say, but I couldn't set a boundary with my manager because, you know, I'm not, it's, it, I'm, I'm, I'm only on the team or no, my, my team member wouldn't accept that. So I couldn't set that boundary. So what other methods could we use? Well, a, a, a really good example is in my own career, I've been in a sales role pretty much my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, one of my real bugbears in a sales environment is CRM. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yet to come across a good CRM. And one of the things I've, I've identified when thinking about this podcast is in each of my roles where the CRM was a challenging environment, and I understand the benefits and the, and, and the, and, and the requirement for a CRM, I don't believe the sales environment or the sales team or the sales leadership was involved in the implementation or the design of the CRM. Ah. That comes back to if you've got a process, if you've got a platform, yeah. make sure that the people that are having to use it and be yeah. involved in it are part of the creation of it. Yeah. That way they are invested in it just as much as you are, as opposed to just saying, here's your hammer, go nail a nail. Yeah. Like, you know, take a take a dog, take a horse to water. Yeah. You know, Day, but teach it how to drink. I don't know what the what the idiom is. Yeah, yeah it's it is really that. important to make sure that those people are involved because it's 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 their job. They have to do it a thousand times a day. Yeah, you may only be looking at reports showing yeah. what the P and L is or what the customer interaction rates are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They had to do it a thousand times a day, and if they believe that there is an inefficiency in that process, you should be all ears. That's fantastic. That's a really, really good example. So thank you for that. And very, very practical, you know, it's something we should be thinking about. So is there anything else you'd like to add? Or... Well, I think I think um, being open uh, mm. to feedback is really important. Yeah. yeah. And we've all been at those company meetings where senior leadership has done a presentation yeah. or, or they have uh, tried to motivate the team and they ask for feedback. Yeah. And across however many people are in the room, all you can hear are crickets. Yeah. Nobody has the confidence to say what they want to say or what they feel they'd like to say. Yeah. And that idiom, the emperor's new clothes, comes into play quite often because mm-hmm. uh, people just don't have the confidence to say, actually, you don't have any clothes on. Yeah. So I think confidential mm-hmm. feedback, mm-hmm. really confidential feedback. And quite often we get these feedback forms that are sent to us 
on an intranet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, via email. Yeah. The level of comfort that I have that those are actually confidential is yeah. very, very low. So be prepared to send out a piece of paper in yeah. an envelope. Yeah. And that actually goes with my staff retention audits because I go in to organisations and I interview people confidentially. There's no IP address and it yeah. is confidential. Yeah. That's right. And, and I can put a report together for it. Yeah. That's right. Or send it to them to print out at home and send it in. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually been in the process of doing these feedback forms and I've gone, hmm, I can't do it because they, they will, they will I, able to identify as me from my language. Yeah. Or from my turn of phrase, et cetera. So yeah. there needs to be some avenue where that confidential feedback yeah. is not only garnered, but also valued. And sometimes it's important to also feedback on that feedback as well. Definitely. And what we want to do, and this is something I work with my leaders all the time and say, is you want to have an atmosphere where people, it's, we're always asking for feedback and everyone's growing with feedback and we're not worried about feedback and we don't go into that panic stage because well, I'm going to give you some feedback. So it should be an environment and a culture where people are asking for feedback and giving feedback confidently and confidentially. Yeah, and, and I think the, 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 the scenario, I think, in today's uh, environment has moved on from the master-slave environment that was in employee mm -hmm. relations of the past. Um, yeah. People have so much choice these days. Yeah. To, and the, and the, the economy has grown exponentially to have so many different markets and variables that people can engage in. And people are sometimes having two, three, four careers throughout their working life. Yeah. So, they will be swapping and changing. But if you have that master-slave environment, or as I prefer to call it in a sales environment, the uneatable carrot, then yeah. people will look sideways and they will look for different opportunities. Yeah. But the more you make them relevant to the business and the more that you feed back on their relevance, yeah. that is the linchpin to maintaining or, or, or to retaining that staff member. Thank you, Paul. Oh, my goodness. I think we could talk about this all day. Good. Thank we you so good. much for all of your insights, your examples. You've really brought this to life. So first of all, to finish off, where can people find you? Because I think everyone can, would love to get in touch. People can find me on the interweb, uh, <laughs> taipansolutions.com, just www.taipansolutions.com, or just uh, seek me out on LinkedIn. I've got my links there as well. Excellent. And I will put those links into the description so that people can find them there. So thank you, Paul, for all your insights. You've been absolutely amazing. Thank you, Claire. Good to catch up.